Hey guys, what's going on? Michael here. And recently, you know, I mentioned it in a video earlier, I hit a wall, right? I was working through objects and modules and things got really complicated. When I hit walls like that, I like to step back and kind of assess everything that led me there, right? Clearly, when something happens like that, if you get stuck, lost, or confused, there's a misunderstanding, there's a loss of knowledge somewhere in the processes beforehand, right? So, I'm gonna be taking this chance to go back and solidify my understanding of all the foundational principles, all the, the key things, the fundamentals that lead up to me getting to objects and modules, right, and classes. So, what better place to start then, with the variable. So the series that I'm making called Mastering JavaScript is me going back to the very beginning, to the first few fundamentals that you really have to learn and making sure I cement that in my head and help cement it in your guys' head, okay? So this is for us. All right, so enough chat, let's jump into it, okay? All right, so let's get into it. First, what is a variable? So I like to think of a variable as being a box in JavaScript, right? And in that box, you can put anything. Whatever you put into that box is in there, and you can go back in and take it out later on in your code, or even change what's in the box, okay? So let's take a look at that. So let's create a variable called box, right? Because we're, on, we're speaking of boxes, so we have variable box. When you create a variable, the first thing you need to do is make a declaration. There's three ways to declare a variable. You can use the word ver, like I did here. You can use the word let, or you can use the word const. Oops, const, there we go. All right, now, let's go ahead and make one. So we have ver here being declared is gonna be box, right? And then we're gonna have let. There are some naming conventions with variables. They cannot share the same name and they are case sensitive. So keep that in mind when naming your variables, okay? So that would mean essentially that box like this is actually different. A box with a capital B is actually different than a box with a lower B even though it's the same word. So keep that in mind when naming your variables. Also try to stick to useful names that describe what you're actually doing, okay? So let's go ahead and keep a name. We have var box. We have let box two, and then we're gonna have const box oops, three. So as of right now, we have three different ways to declare a variable, okay? Now, once you have your declaration and then the name of your variable, here we just named our variable box, then you can use the assignment operator or the equal sign to specify what's in the box. As soon as you put the equal sign, you're saying, hey, this is what's in the box. This is what's in the variable. For the sake of simplicity for this video, I'm gonna be sticking with strings and numbers. So strings are any text inside of quotation marks, like so. And you guys know what a number is, one all the way to infinity, right? Infinity is actually a value in JavaScript, so don't use that. But you guys know what a number is, right? So I'm gonna stick to strings for now. So in box, we have love. Let's go ahead and name our box. In box one, we have love. In box two, we'll have heart. And in box three, we'll have soul. So let's go ahead and save that, jump over to our browser. Now inside of the browser, you can call those variables and see what they are in the, in the console. So here I'm gonna type in box one is love. That's what we put in box one. Box two is heart, and box three is soul. So three different ways to declare a variable. Now there are some differences between the things, okay? There are some differences. I like, I prefer to stick with let and const. For one, var is global, and when you're using var, you can run into some problems when you're coding things. So try to stick to const and let. Now, what's the difference between let and const? First, let's take a look at const. Const is short for constant. Whatever you put into a constant variable cannot be changed. Now, if you were to put an array or an object into a const variable, the array elements or the object properties can be changed, but the object or array itself cannot. So let's take a look at that real fast. So here we have an array of cars, Chevy, Ford, GMC, right? We save this, if we go to our browser, 
we type in cars boom there they are now we can add stuff to cars and take things away from cars so if i was to change let's change car zero so we'll change cars zero equals let's say bmw All right boom now we type in cars and look at that car zero has changed from chevy to bmw even though it's declared under const as constant, we can still change what's in it. Okay, next, let's look at adding something. So let's say cars dot push. What do we wanna push in there? Let's push dodge in there. I'm not even a dodge guy, but we'll throw some dodges in there, right? Now it's telling us there's four cars. So we successfully added a car to the array. And now if we look at the array cars, dodge is in there. So we can still change elements of an array. Now let's look at the object the same way. All right, and now we have our car object. All right, so if we were to go into our browser and take a look at it, not to be confused with cars, I know they're similar, but we have a car. It's not type, it's an object. The brackets here means it's an object, okay? And each text in white is the property. And then the actual strings here are the values, okay? Or keys and values, depending on how you wanna look at that. So what we have is a car, right? We have the type, the model, and the color. Now, let's see if we can change something. Let's say car.color equals red, right? And now let's look at car again. Boom, now the car's color is red. Now let's take that same concept and see if we can add something to it. Let's say, hmm, what do we wanna add? Car owner. Let's say car.owner equals Michael boom and now we look at car and there it is the owner is now added so even though it's a constant variable you can still change the properties of the object as well really good to know I didn't know that earlier okay now if you were to try to change what it is it won't let you so let's say uh, car equals I'll oh, screw cars let's go to the array cars equals um, uh, Volvo, just a short one, uh, GMC, and Volvo and GMC. Boom, we can't change it because it's constant. It's also the same with objects. If we were to grab the object named cars and try to put another object in there as cars equals another object, it wouldn't let you. So that's the big thing to know about const variables. Now, let variables have a nippy little thing too, okay? They can be assigned without the value. So in my code over here, I can say, let book, right? And now if we go back to our browser, when I type in, I didn't say, now when I type in book, it's undefined, okay? But now we come down here and I can say book. But now we can go into our code and I can say book equals Harry Potter. Save that, go back to our browser, type in book, and our book has become Harry Potter. You cannot do that with const variables. Const variables have to have a value declared. They have to have something there when you declare them. There has to be there has to be something on the other side of the equal sign. Let, not the case. You can assign a let value later. And the last real difference between let and const as variable declarations is their scope. Now, I like to think of scope as range, right? You have block scope, which is what I consider close range, and then you have global scope, all right? Block and global. Now, const and let both have block scope, all right? Now let me show you what that means. So they're both close range variables. Ver has global scope. So let's take a look at global scope first. Let's declare a variable with ver. Um, let's make it an animal equals dog, right? And then let's create a function for global scope. Function, we'll name the function global scope. And then what do we want it to do? Let's change animal equals cat. Oops. And then return cat. All right. Oops, not return cat, return animal. All right, so let's jump back over to our browser and look at the animal variable, which is dog. 
And now we'll fire off our global scope function. Boom. It changes the variable animal to cat. And now we'll type in animal again. And now the variable has become cat. Even though it was declared outside of this block of code here, even though it was declared outside here, changing it, changing what animal is in here changed this variable. That's global scope. That's why I call it long range scope. It has effects on variables outside of the block text, right? Now let's take a look at block scope or close range. So for close range, let's use names this time. We will do, let's do both. I'll show you guys what I mean by block text for both let and const. So we'll have let name equal ace. Yes, I'm a One Piece fan if you can't tell. <laughs> so let name equal ace. Um, what do we wanna do here? Let's do colors. Const color equals, what's a cool color? We'll do red again, right? So we have name and color. Now we'll make a function. We'll call it block scope. And inside the block scope function, we'll change the name to be Michael. And we'll change the color to green. And then we will console log uh, console log name is name and color is color. All right, so let's take a look now. Let's jump over to our browser. We have name, our name is Ace. We have color, and our color is red. Now, let's fire off our block scope function and see what happens. Boom, and now inside of our block scope function, we have our name is Michael, and our color is green. Even though outside, those same variables are ace and red. And that's what block scope is. Whatever's in here has no effect on what's out here. Block scope means it only pertains to this block right here. And I can't tell you how many times I've messed up things not understanding that. So I wish I would have known that earlier about variables. Like that's something I overlooked. Scope is very important very fundamental. We can go a little bit deeper into other things, but I'm gonna keep it at a super basic level now. And I think I'm gonna do functions next. If there's anything you guys wanna see me cover, any of the fundamentals, uh, I gladly will. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up now. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot about variables that I didn't really, that didn't really submit itself in. Like the scope of variables wasn't, I wasn't quite clear on that until really sitting down and researching, all right? So I hope this video helps you guys out. That's it for me. As you can see, like the sunset during this video. Looks nice in here though, huh? Some nice lighting. I don't mind this, by the way. I have these lights up temporarily to see if I like them. You guys want to see them real fast? Let's see, if I can find the remote, I'll show you guys. Oh, I found the remote. You ready? The sun's setting is going to look pretty nice. You ready? You ready? Boom. So I don't know if I want to keep them yet or not. Uh, I obviously have to make some changes here. I think it looks pretty cool though. I got to do some things differently, but... So don't mind the tape. I'm seeing if I like it. I might move some stuff around. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see y'all for the next one, all right? Peace. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I sign out, follow me on Twitter, dudes. Uh, it should be up here. Up here. Up here. Right here. should be right here. All right? The whole video. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to grow the community out. And uh, check out the other videos if you haven't already. All right. Now, I'm gone for real. Peace.